Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we're looking at intaglio printing, uh, sort of the kitchen way. <laughs> now it all starts with um, a tetra pack, um, a nice a way to recycle an item. And you just uh, cut it up and you have a large piece and then you have some of the smaller sides. And uh, just to show you here, some, it looks like this on the inside. Now I was doing some research on etching presses and I discovered uh, Bill Ritchie and he makes these fabulous little half wood presses that are absolute gems. They are a work of art. And uh, I happily left some comments and um, he was nice enough to reply and uh, we've been sort of talking ever since. Now, I can't afford one of his presses, so what we're going to do uh, to use today is to uh, use my pasta machine, and that works just fine. Or, of course, you can hand print. But with Intaglio, it is very difficult. Now, I'll just show you the results of hand printing in Intaglio. And uh, it's, you know, it's there, but it's a bit on the fuzzy side, even though bees are quite fuzzy. And... Um, and you know you can rescue it by um, coloring it in and um, adding more detail, of course. And you can see the outlines of the dark lines to some degree. And I did a bigger one, um, and this one is hand printed as well. And it did turn out better. Uh, some of the problem had to do with the paper. Now you really have to wet your paper, you know, soak it for at least a half an hour. So that was part of my problem. So we worked uh, through a few of the variables and we're finally getting a, a decent product. But with the um, little pasta machine, well, we are getting some really good results, as you can see, com uh, compared to that, right? So. I did this drawing and uh, I didn't like the flower at the top, even though this is a very prominent feature of delphiniums. It was the bees on my delphiniums. We've had uh, the short on this and it's been very popular. Lots of, check it out, it's under my shorts and it's bees on the delphinium. So I thought that would be a good subject for today. Now, in order to get the uh, image onto your Tetra Pak, you do your drawing in pencil. And I learned this from another uh, really good um, printmaker. Uh, she's in the UK. And uh, I just used uh, 2B pencil and 4B pencil. And if you take a bone folder and rub it across, you should be able to pick up the image fairly well. You have to press a little bit, but it'll work. Uh, alternatively, of course, you can use, um, you know, um, graphite on the back of your image, um, carbon paper. There's probably several ways to get the image imprinted on there. And this is just going to be fast and dirty. And I didn't press very hard. You can see it showing up there. It's not too bad. Okay, so that's one way of getting the image on there. So I have the drawing done uh, and uh, we have our little plates. And I'll just show you some of the tools we're using. And I have all sorts of tools here. Now, I did have etching tools at one time. <laughs> but this is a long time ago. So I have all sorts of things, whatever works, right? These little tiny uh, ball, they have little balls at the end, more knives. I have a variety of them, but I, what I found um, that worked the best was this awl and it has a very nice tip on it. So you just, um, you know, and it scratches into this Tetra Pak material. 
really well. And it will do fine detail. And it will do stippling. Now intaglio has to do uh, with marks under the surface. Now relief has to do with uh, printing the cutaway parts, um, not the cutaway parts, but the parts that are left after you cut away, say a wood block or a, a lino block. So this way it's under the surface and that's why we call it intaglio. So little dots. Now it's a kind of a very meditative process. It'll take you time to do this drawing on here. Uh, and I adjusted a little bit um, when I was doing the lines here. And you can add more detail. The more marks there are, like cross hatching, the darker it will be because uh, the ink will sit in the screws that you've made. So, okay, so let's, let's start with uh, drawing our paper. And I have a towel. And we're just going to take the shine off. Don't get the paper too dry, but not too wet either. There's a sort of a fine line. You'll, as you practice, you will learn exactly how much. If it's too wet, you can feel it with the back of your hand. I think that's not too bad. So I have a plastic bag uh, just to keep it moist and not uh, drying out. We'll just tuck it in here until you're ready to use it. Now I have a little dedicated um, plexiglass plate. This part is the messy part. We'll start with our B. And we're just going to use uh, water-based ink. And this is uh, Speedball block printing ink. And we'll just put a little bit on here. It will dry on the plate um, eventually. So don't put too much out. So I have some cheesecloth here. Um, this is what they use uh, and printmakers use, but uh, they starch it, so it's quite tough. And uh, I haven't starched uh, cheesecloth. They, they also call it tarlatan or um, scrib. I'm just going to um, use a toothbrush or you can use a little dauber. This, this is just some of the leftover um, printing paper. And you want to really cover the ink on there because um, you want to get all the ink in those little tiny grooves that you've made. And then the funny part is then you take all it everything off the surface and hopefully not so much that you take out of the grooves as well. All right. And alternately you can take a toothbrush and really scrub it in there. I kind of like the toothbrush. That works for me. If you're using a big plate, of course, then the daubers would probably be handier, but for these little guys, it's quite fine. Okay. Sort of clean up as you go along because it does get really messy. Now this is getting as stiff as tarlatan because I've been uh, using it for wiping the plates. And there's a specific movement you
dig it in like this. I'll try and not get my fingers in the way because it's such a small piece that, so you can see what I'm doing. And just use that movement to make sure all the ink is in those little tiny grooves. We can turn it if that makes it easier. There we go. Make sure you get everything. Then I have a little dedicated uh, plastic bag for the different levels of wiping. That also controls mess a little bit. So again, that movement. And you can see that the ink is getting nicely into the grooves. You don't want to do too much of this because uh, again, you might start removing what you don't want. And then the next part is you start wiping and keep it flat. Now you're just wiping the ink you don't want off the surface. Now wiping is kind of an art form because uh, it all depends how dark you want your print to be. In our case, uh, the B in the background should stay fairly light, so, so we just gently start to wipe a little bit. That's probably all that's going to happen with that. And then um, I've cut up some uh, just newsprint and just gently start to rub. You can take off what you need to. Just keep it flat. Turn your work. If it starts getting too mucky, um, let's get another one. Now it's rubbing off nicely. And we're not losing anything out of our grooves. Don't be too heavy-handed, just light wiping. I'm keeping my fingers uh, on this extra sheet because you don't want finger marks. So carry on like this for a bit. You can also use a cloth and, and just gently rubbing. And you'll see how much uh, of the ink is coming off as to how much further you have to go.
and you can go to a lighter and lighter cloth if you want. This is still pretty rough. Now these little Tetra Pak um, plates will not last forever, but you can get a fairly decent um, edition. Now with printmaking, um, you have a plate and then you uh, ink it and then you run it through a press or hand print it. And your first proof usually isn't very good, but subsequent proofs um, improve and then this is truly a limited edition because uh, you will make so many and then at the very like and you say it ahead of time at the um, end say I want a, a hundred or fifty prints then at the end of that fifty uh, you put a cross uh, through your plate and then uh, you keep it for safekeeping and then you number your prints at the bottom, so many out of, you know, 50. And that is a true uh, limited edition print. Um, it's a work of art that's, you know, has just a small run. Uh, not like some of the reproductions where they say it's a limited edition, but they're not. They're just a photocopy on a printing press. And they're not particularly valuable more than the cost of the paper. <laughs> okay, so now I'm fairly pleased with that. I might want to take some highlights off the wings. So I have some Q-tips and I'm just going to take a daub off the eye here of the, of the bee. And then... Uh, I want to maybe lighten up some of the wings. So you just rub it off. See there's a tiny bit that's coming off, not much. Just where you think the sunlight might be hitting the... It won't be all that exact. And we'll just maybe do a little bit on the back wing, but not much. And we don't need to do anything on the body because it's normally yellow or orange and these parts are black so so now I think we're at the point where we can we could, if you see any spots you can take them off and clean your edges even go further than that. So the next step is to get our paper in place and put our little package together at the, I mean I would love an etching press but we don't have that. We have our little pasta maker but that will work. So our plate is going over and we'll take an interlude and we'll be back in a flash. So I've put some newsprint on, uh, this was sort of um, a foam, uh, this stuff, the craft foam, and just a couple of sheets of that that fit into my little uh, pasta maker. And here's our paper that's been moistened, just place it over, and another sheet of uh, newsprint. And to finish the sandwich, we just put this on top. I've put it um, fairly close to the top so that uh, you can catch it in the pasta maker, so not too high up. So we're now going to roll it through gently, and I have to catch it at the bottom here. 
and then uh, we're just going to roll it through. And let's see how it printed. And there we are. And it's not a bad print. So some really good details. Look at the thinness of the lines. Uh, where I wanted fuzziness, it's fuzzy. The, all the little hairy legs look really good. <laughs> and we have a little bit of tone in the, in the background, which is just perfect so that our um, you know, wings show up so much nicer. Could maybe have wiped a little bit more off the wings, but I think it's fine. Okay, next we're going to try um, using our gel plate. And we'll see if this is going to uh, print. We're going to ink our plate. And I don't need to alter, um, you can hear the sound. It's just the right consistency, so. Sometimes you have to cut it, uh, you know, with a little bit of medium or water um, to make it just the right consistency. So we're going to place this down. And uh, we're going to do a background print just to, um, this is just um, wax paper, I think. I'm just going to remove a lot of this background. And we'll see what transpires in the print. Just lift an edge here. Lift it up. And we'll see if we actually have a useful uh, gel plate print. This is oriental paper. Now we're going to we well, we have to put some muscle into it to pick up all the lines. It'll be fairly dark. Uh, we maybe rub a little bit more. I just wonder if the spoon here is going to be useful. getting some of the etched lines, some of the details. We've kind of lost the B a little bit, but it's kind of an interesting print. Now you could probably go over, uh, you know, with other media to bring out the B. And I'm just wondering if we should, I'm seeing more detail here. Let's do a, another print of that. This will be the ghost print, and if something shows up, um, that will be very surprising. Now we really have to 
put some muscle into this. Now if we luck out, we might be able to get that bee on the ghost print. <laughs> well, we get a few more details. You can see some of the lines. Okay, I'm going to clean this uh, really well and then uh, we'll give it one more shot and clean the plate. So we'll take an interlude and we'll see you in a sec. Okay, we're in one more go here at um, trying the gel plate print. I've cleaned the plate really, really well. Also, my gel plate. The ink should be just perfect. We're going to place our little bee on the delphinium. And we're going to put paper on top to pick up the background and impress the image. And because I've taken all the ink off the grooves, most of it anyway, we should have those lines turn up as white. That's uh, the best of it, but I don't know. There's probably something you can never remove, so. And muscle. <laughs> and then lift our plate gently. Anyway, the oriental, now the thing to do is to put the smoother surface on here. And and I might just use my metal spoon. If you'll notice, um, the lines are white on here, if you can see them, and that's how they should show up on the gel plate print. So it's kind of a reversal of the intaglio. So we have a bit of a halo. Okay, so some lines are fairly white, but mostly in the outline. And you can see the bee a little bit more distinctly. Now I've noticed with the other one, the previous one we did, that um, as the paper dries, you can see more of the tiny little lines. So anyway, experimental and um, fun stuff. You could probably, you know, do some coloring and that the lines will show up even more. Um, quite a nice little print actually so so there you are so that's using the gel plate and we'll clean this up once more because this is the one we're going to be doing the uh, oil based um, etching ink on and we'll clean this up and we'll do another interlude and we'll see you for the last part
Well, we're on the home stretch, people. <laughs> okay, so I have cleaned off and dried um, my little water-based uh, plate, and uh, it should work. We have our Daniel Smith oil-based relief ink here. I've put a dab there, and we're ready to ink this plate. And you can see the viscosity is quite different. It's much more tacky. I use uh, just a cheap um, uh, olive oil uh, for cleaning. And then detergent after that. Now because we had our little Tetra pack um, plate uh, in the sink and washing it carefully. Uh, it's deteriorated a little bit, but not too much, which is amazing. Now the procedure for inking is pretty well the same. What will be different is how it prints in our little pasta maker. And be sure and check out all the other uh, printmakers. Uh, a lot of them are in the UK who are using Tetra Packs for their... And there's one young fellow, um, I'm not sure what country he's from, maybe Turkey, I'm not sure. But he did quite a big plate, so very ambitious. All right. So again, as before, um, twisting and turning to get the ink into the grooves. I'm going to have to cut some fresh uh, cheesecloth because this is uh, oil based and the other one is. Uh, so we get most of the ink off the top and ink into the grooves with our twisting motion. We could probably do the entire thing just with these newsprint things which I may do. It takes it off quite well. My poor little leg here is coming apart. <laughs> this is one bee who's lost a leg with me. careful with that part. <clears throat> so I'm not doing anything different for a while, um, so um, we'll probably speed this process up. Um, Josh will put some music on, his own original beautiful music. And we'll just roar right through this process.
So it takes quite a bit longer to uh, get the ink on the, with the oil base, but we're getting there. The final thing I'm doing here is just a cloth. And I'll probably just take some uh, Q-tips for the final here. I have to be careful that you don't take the ink out of the grooves. And I'm just going to do a few highlights here on the delphinium. And you can play around with this. Like I have some contour lines here that um, as they dip down, you don't have to take off as much of the paint. And as they're up above, like here, they'd be catching more of the light. So you have some control over some of these things, some nuances, if you like. Okay, I think it's not too bad. I don't want to mess with that part because it wasn't printing all that well earlier. So I think we're ready to take it to the little pasta machine. Okay, this is a second attempt at the oil-based etching inks. Just putting our sandwich together. I've added a little bit more pressure. get this through now. Okay, so there's our print and I've over inked it and it's still quite pale so but it's much better. But still, it tells you, you know, that um, the uh, water-based uh, speedball inks are, are the way to go. Well, there you have it. And uh, the winner is uh, the speedball printing inks. So probably any water-based like Akua uh, works well. We're close on the other one. It might be a question of viscosity. It might be because we hadn't soaked the paper long enough. There's some good detail and we lost the bee somehow. So I adjusted the pressure, but it was still maybe not quite enough. But anyway, the water-based one is just fantastic. So so there you have it. We are doing intaglio with uh, our <laughs> chicken broth <laughs> oh, our tetra packs <laughs> and it works and it's great and if you have a pasta machine um, yes I think that is a big help because it's hard on your shoulders to do it by hand and that's why we have gel plates to do uh, a lot of these prints and uh, uh, less pain and effort and get a great result but if you have an etching press or uh, the pasta machine, uh, this is worth a try. And uh, of course, uh, you can trace. You don't have to draw your base image. 
lots of things you can do. And then don't forget to hand color them with watercolor or pastel or uh, cancel crayon, whatever you want. And uh, that just uh, brings them to the next level. So as usual, take care of yourselves and your families. Be kind to one another. Bye for now.